As much as we might like to think that our collective knowledge has unlocked most of the mysteries of the universe, we've only got a hold on a tiny fraction of the knowledge required to understand it fully, and it's a weak hold at best. The universe is a crazy place. In fact, it's probably the craziest place you've ever been. It's full of exploding stars and immortal jellyfish, and it's been kicking around for almost 14 billion years. Number 10. The Ekproctic Universe Theory Providing an alternative to the widely accepted Big Bang Theory, the Ekproptic Universe Theory suggests that, unlike the Big Bang, which supposedly began from a singularity, our universe is two universes that smashed into each other. It's thought that this collision had the effect of resetting our universe, and after that point, it started expanding just like in the Big Bang. However, instead of infinitely expanding forever, the theory asserts that one day the universe will begin to contract, inevitably leading to what some astrophysicists refer to as the Big Crunch. All the speed and energy involved in the Big Crunch then creates another monumental collision, which results in the universe being reset again so the cycle can repeat itself for all of eternity. Number 9. Most of the stuff in the universe has repulsive gravity. The universe is expanding, its constituent galaxies flying apart like cosmic pieces of shrapnel in the aftermath of the Big Bang. The only force operating should be gravity, which acts as a web of elastic between the galaxies, slowing them down. But in 1998, contrary to all expectations, astronomers found that the expansion of the universe is actually speeding up. To explain it, they postulated the existence of invisible stuff, which they've termed dark energy that fills space and has repulsive gravity. It is the repulsive gravity of this dark energy that is accelerating cosmic expansion. Dark energy accounts for almost two-thirds of the mass energy of the universe. School science is, therefore, behind the times in saying that gravity sucks. In most of the universe, it blows. Number 8. Tsunamis on Mars Billions of years ago, a giant landslide cascaded down the largest mountain slopes in the solar system, Mars's Olympus Mons. When all this material fell into the water of Mars's probable ancient ocean, it created a towering tsunami stretching between 25 and 43 miles long that crashed against the shore of the planet's northern hemisphere. Today, Mars is a cold, dry world, home to dust devils and robotic explorers. But many scientists suspect it was once waterlogged. New studies suggest that a 75-mile-wide impact scar in the Martian northern lowlands is to the red planet what the Chicks Club crater is to Earth, the mark of a meteor that generated a mega-tsunami when the planet was relatively young. If accurate, the finding adds new evidence to the hypothesis that Mars once had an ocean and would have implications for our search for life there. Another clue is the hole in the crater's southern section. The plains there are tilted up toward the southern highlands. It's possible that the ocean, displayed by the impact, would have rushed back most aggressively from this direction, bursting through the crater's southern rim. Number 7. We appear to be alone There are approximately 100 quintillion stars in the universe, and probably more planets than stars. Yet in all this immensity, there's only one place we know of where life exists, Earth. Despite searches for intelligent signals, no sign of intelligent extraterrestrial life has been found. In fact, there's a good argument that if such life forms exist out there, not only should we see signs of them, but they should probably already have come here. Where are they? The physicist Enrico Fermi famously asked. Some astronomers think the answer is we're alone, that someone has to be the first. But the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. It took 3 billion years to go from single cells to complex life, which suggests taking this step is hard. Technological civilizations like ours may be rare, and their lifetimes short. We may have missed any others by millions or billions of years. The other alternative is that the nearest one may be too far away for us to detect. Number 6. Most planetary systems are different from ours Scientists hate to invoke anything special about our situation in the universe. Special is improbable, while typical is probable. But the discovery of planets around other stars, at last count more than 3,500 have been confirmed, has created a headache. None is like our own. There are super compact planetary systems in which all planets orbit closer to their parent star than Mercury, the Earth's innermost planet does to the Sun. There are Jupiter mass planets that have migrated inward. There are planets in highly elliptical orbits similar to those of comets. And some planets orbit the wrong way around their stars. 
Given that planets are believed to congeal from gas and dust swirling in the same direction around a newborn sun, this latter discovery is tough to explain. As yet, nobody knows whether the unusualness of our solar system has anything to do with the human race having arisen to notice it. Number 5. The Sun is producing only a third of the neutrinos expected. Hold up your thumb. 100 billion neutrinos are passing through your thumbnail every second. Eight and a half minutes ago, they were in the heart of the Sun. Solar neutrinos are a byproduct of sunlight generating nuclear reactions. When Ray Davis set out to detect them with 100,000 gallons of cleaning fluid down a mine in South Dakota, he expected to confirm the standard picture of the Sun. Instead, he found only a third of the expected neutrinos, something that was not only confirmed by later experiments, but led to his Nobel Prize. Neutrinos are ghostly subatomic particles existing in a weird quantum superposition, akin to an animal that is simultaneously a cow, a pig, and a chicken. As they travel from the sun, they flip between being an electron neutrino, a muon neutrino, and a tau neutrino, which is why experiments sensitive to only one type pick up a third of the expected number. Number 4. The Universe Was Born Our universe was born about 13.7 billion years ago in a massive expansion that blew space up like a giant balloon. In a nutshell, that's the Big Bang Theory, which virtually all cosmologists and theoretical physicists endorse. The evidence supporting this idea is extensive and convincing. For example, we know that the universe is still expanding even now at an ever-accelerating rate. Scientists have also discovered a predicated thermal imprint of the Big Bang, the universe pervading cosmic microwave background radiation. And we don't see any objects older than 13.7 billion years, suggesting that our universe came into being around that time. The fireball began expanding out, out of the cooling debris, there eventually congealed the galaxies, great islands of stars of which our Milky Way is one among an estimated two trillion. Whatever way you look at it, the idea that the universe popped into existence out of nothing, that there was a day without a yesterday, is utterly bonkers. But that is exactly what the evidence tells us. An immediate question arises, what happened before the Big Bang? The reluctance to face this awkward question is why most scientists had to be dragged kicking and screaming to accept the Big Bang Theory. Number 3. 95% of the universe is invisible The visible universe, including Earth, the Sun, other stars and galaxies, is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons bundled together into atoms. Perhaps one of the most surprising discoveries of the 20th century was that this ordinary or baryonic matter makes up less than 5% of the universe's mass. The rest of the universe appears to be made of a mysterious, invisible substance called dark matter, 25%, and that a force that repels gravity known as dark energy, 70%. There is a discovery so amazing that it has yet to trickle into the consciousness of most working scientists. Everything science has been studying these past 350 years is but a minor contaminant of the universe. Only about 4.9% of the mass energy of the universe is atoms. The kind of stuff you, me, the stars and galaxies are made of. And of that, only half has been spotted with telescopes. About 26.8% of cosmic mass energy is invisible dark matter, revealed because it tugs with its gravity on the invisible stuff. In addition to dark matter, there is dark energy, accounting for 68.3% of the mass energy of the universe. It's invisible, fills all of space, and is accelerating cosmic expansion. And our best theory, quantum theory, overestimates its energy density by a factor of 1, followed by 120 zeros. Number 2. The universe has the same temperature everywhere. The temperature of the cosmic microwave background, the radiation bathing of all of space, is remarkably uniform. It varies by less than 0.001 degrees from a chilly 2.725 Kelvin. But while that might seem natural enough, this consistency is a real puzzle. For two widely separated areas of the cosmos to reach thermal equilibrium, heat needs enough time to travel from one to the other. If this happens at the speed of light, the universe is just too young for this to have happened. Cosmologists try to explain this uniformity by using the hypothesis known as inflation. It replaces this simple idea of a Big Bang with one in which there's also a moment of exponential expansion. This sudden, faster-than-light increase in the universe's size allows it to have started off smaller than an atom when it would have had plenty of time to equalize its temperature. 
Astronomers fixed this by maintaining that early on, the universe was much smaller than expected, so heat got around easily. To get from this smaller size to its current size, the universe had to go through an initial burst of superfast expansion known as inflation. Number 1. There is a supermassive black hole at the heart of every galaxy. Active galaxies often pump out 100 times lighter than a normal galaxy. With the discovery in 1963 of quasars, it was clear that the light comes not from stars, but a central region smaller than the solar system. The only possible energy source is matter heated to incandescence as it swirls down onto a giant black hole up to 50 billion times the sun's mass. In the 1990s, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope found that, although active galaxies account for about only 1% of galaxies, supermassive black holes are no anomaly. Almost every galaxy, including our Milky Way, contains one, but starved of a food supply, most have switched off. What are supermassive black holes doing in the hearts of galaxies? Were they the seeds around which galaxies congealed? Or did newborn galaxies spawn them? These remain some of the biggest unsolved questions in astrophysics. Thanks for watching. Leave the comment down below and let us know what do you think. Don't forget to subscribe for new and upcoming episodes.